audiobook for English story listening. Once upon a time, there was a poor widow who lived in a little cottage. In front of her cottage, there was a lovely garden with two rose trees. One tree had beautiful white roses, and the other had vibrant red roses. She had two children who resembled the rose trees. One was called Snow White and the other Rose Red. They were kind, loving, and always busy with something. Snow White was gentle and quiet, while Rose Red was more energetic and loved running around in the fields, looking for flowers and chasing birds. Snow White enjoyed staying at home with her mother, helping her with work and reading aloud when they had free time. The two sisters cared for each other deeply. They were always seen hand in hand. And should Snow White say to her sister, we will never separate, the other would reply, not while we live, the mother adding, whatever one has, she should always share with the other. They often went together into the woods, collecting ripe berries. The amazing thing was that no animal ever harmed them. Instead, the animals respected and admired the girls. Hares would come to eat parsley from their hands, deer grazed peacefully beside them, and even the birds stayed on the branches, singing without fear. Nothing bad ever happened to the sisters. If they got lost in the woods at night, they would lie down on the soft moss, sleep until morning, and their mother trusted that they were safe. Once the two sisters spent the night in the woods. As the bright sunrise awakened them, they noticed a beautiful child sitting nearby. The child wore a snow-white robe that shone like diamonds. When the sisters opened their eyes, the child stood up and looked at them kindly. However, she didn't say a word and vanished into the forest. When the children looked around, they realized they had been sleeping on the edge of a cliff. If they had taken just two more steps in the darkness, they would have fallen over. Their mother believed that the beautiful child must have been an angel watching over good children. Snow White and Rose Red took great care of their mother's cottage, keeping it so clean that it pleased anyone who saw it. In the summertime, Rose Red took care of the house. Every morning before their mother woke up, Rose Red placed a bouquet with a rose from each of the rose trees by her mother's bed. In the wintertime, Snow White lit the fire and polished the kettle until it shone like gold. In the evening, when snow was falling, her mother would ask them to lock the door and then, sitting by the fireplace, the good widow would read aloud to them from a big book while the little girls were spinning. Close by them lay a lamb and a white pigeon with its head tucked under its wing. One evening, the family sat together in their cozy cottage when they heard a knock at the door, as if someone wanted to come inside. Make haste, Rose Red, said their mother. Open the door. It's probably a traveler seeking shelter. Rose Red obediently pulled back the bolt, expecting to see a poor man. But to her surprise, it was not a man at all. It was a bear, poking his big black head through the open door. Rose Red screamed and jumped back, while the lamb bleated and the dove flapped her wings. Snow White, frightened, hid behind her mother's bed. The bear spoke gently, saying, Don't be afraid, I won't harm you. I am half frozen and would like to warm myself by your fire. Poor bear, the mother replied with kindness. Come in and lie by the fire. Just be careful not to burn your fur. Then she called Snow White and Rose Red, assuring them that the bear was friendly and wouldn't hurt them. They approached the bear, as their mother instructed, and soon enough, even the lamb and the dove came closer without fear. Children, the bear requested, 
Could you please knock some of the snow off my coat? So Snow White and Rose Red fetched a broom and brushed the bear's coat, making it clean and snow free. After resting by the fire, the bear stretched out and let out a content growl to show his happiness and comfort. Soon, they all became good friends, and the children started playing with their unexpected visitor. They pulled his thick fur, climbed on his back, and even rolled him over and over. They even used a slender hazel twig to brush his coat, and they laughed when he growled in response. The bear allowed them to have fun, but sometimes he would call out when they went a little too far, saying, Children, spare me an inch of life. When nighttime came and everyone was getting ready for bed, the widow said to the bear, If you like, you can stay here and lie by the hearth to keep warm and be protected from the cold and bad weather. The bear accepted the offer, and in the morning as the day broke, the two children let him out and he went back into the woods over the snow. From that day on, the bear would come every evening at the same time, lie by the fire, and let the children play with him. They grew very fond of their unusual playmate, and they never bolted the door in the evening until he had appeared. Soon the spring arrived, and everything started to look green and bright. One morning, the bear said to Snow White, Now I must leave you, and I won't be able to come back all summer. Where are you going, dear bear? asked Snow White. I need to go to the woods to protect my treasure from the bad dwarfs. In winter, when the earth is frozen, they have to stay underground and cannot come out. But now that the sun has melted the ice, they can come to the surface. Anything they get their hands on or take to their caves almost never sees daylight again. Snow White felt very sad as she said goodbye to the kind bear and opened the door for him to leave. However, as he was going out, he got caught on a hook in the door frame, and a piece of his fur got torn. Snow White thought she saw something shiny like gold through the tear, but he went out so quickly that she could not feel certain what it was, and soon he was hidden among the trees. One day, the mother sent her children to the woods to gather sticks. They found a big tree that had fallen down. As they approached the roots, they noticed something jumping and bouncing, hidden among the grass. When they got closer, they saw it was a dwarf with a wrinkled face and a long snow-white beard. The beard was stuck in a cut in the tree trunk, and the little fellow was hopping around, unable to free himself. He looked at the children with his fiery red eyes and called out, Why are you just standing there? Can't you come and help me? Rose Red asked, What were you trying to do, little fellow? The dwarf replied, You silly, curious goose. I was trying to split the trunk to make kitchen sticks. We don't need big logs to cook our small amount of food. Unlike you heavy, greedy people, we don't eat a lot. I had driven in the bill hook, and I was almost finished with my work. But the tool suddenly came out of the cut and closed again so quickly that it caught my beautiful white beard. Now I can't free myself. You stupid, pale-faced creatures, are you laughing at me? Despite the dwarf's bad temper, the girls tried their best to free him but they couldn't move his tightly wedged beard. Mm, I will run and get someone else, said Rose Red. You're an idiot, the dwarf cried. Who needs more people? There are already too many here. Can't you think of something better? Don't be so impatient, Snow White said. I'll try to think of a solution. She clapped her hands as if she had a solution, took out her scissors, and quickly set the dwarf free by cutting off the end of his beard. As soon as the dwarf realized that he was free, he grabbed a sack full of gold hidden among the tree's roots 
he lifted it up and grumbled. Clumsy creatures, you cut off a piece of my beautiful beard, which I am so proud of. I'll let the cuckoos punish you for what you did. With that, he slung the sack over his shoulder and walked away without even looking at the children. Not long after, the two sisters went to the river to catch fish for dinner. As they approached the water, they saw something that looked like a big grasshopper hopping towards the stream, as if it wanted to jump in. They hurried to see what it was and discovered that it was the dwarf. Where are you going? said Rose Red. Surely you will not jump into the water. I'm not that foolish, yelled the little man. Can't you see that a terrible fish is pulling me in? The dwarf had been sitting by the stream fishing. Unfortunately, the wind had tangled his beard in the fishing line, and just as a big fish took the bait, the grumpy little fellow didn't have enough strength to pull it out. So the fish had the upper hand and was dragging the dwarf along. He tried to grab onto anything he could, but it didn't help much. He was being pulled closer and closer to the edge of the river. Luckily, the girls arrived just in time. They grabbed hold of the dwarf tightly and tried to untangle his beard from the fishing line, but they were too tightly entangled. There was no choice but to use the scissors again. They took them out and cut off the tangled part of the beard. Then the dwarf got really angry and shouted at them, Is this how you ruin my beard? Not only did you make it shorter before, but now you're making it even smaller and completely ruining it. I won't be able to show my face to my friends anymore. I wish you had gotten lost before you took this road. With that, he grabbed a sack of pearls that was hidden among the rushes, and without saying another word, he hobbled away and disappeared behind a large stone. Soon after this, it chanced that the poor widow sent her children to the town to purchase cotton, needles, ribbon, and tape. The road to town passed through a common area where big rocks were scattered all around, the children noticed a large bird flying in the sky. They saw that it was circling slowly and getting closer to the ground until it suddenly pounced down among the rocks. They heard a cry of distress, and when they hurried to the spot, they were horrified to see that the eagle had grabbed the dwarf they knew and was about to carry him away. Without hesitation, the kind-hearted children grabbed the little man and fought bravely with the eagle to save him. After a rough struggle, they managed to keep the dwarf safe in their hands, and the eagle flew away. Once the little man recovered from his fright, he started complaining in his squeaky voice. Couldn't you have been gentler? Look at my little coat. You've torn and damaged it badly, you clumsy and meddling things. Then he picked up a sack of jewels and disappeared behind a rock. By this time, the girls were used to his ungrateful behavior, so they ignored it and continued on their way. They made their purchases in town and were ready to return home. On their way back, suddenly once more they ran across their dwarf friend. Upon a clear space, he had turned out his sack of jewels so that he could count and admire them for he had not imagined that anybody would at so late an hour be coming across the common. The setting sun illuminated the brilliant stones, and their colors and sparkle caught the children's attention, causing them to pause and admire them as well. What are you staring at? shouted the dwarf, becoming red with anger. Why are you standing there and making ugly faces? He might have continued with his insults, but suddenly a loud growl was heard nearby, and a big black bear joined the scene. The dwarf panicked and tried to reach his hiding place, but the bear was too close. In obvious distress, the dwarf pleaded, Dear Mr. Bear, please forgive me. I will give you all my treasure. Look at those precious stones lying there. Spare my life. 
what would you do with such a small and insignificant creature like me? You wouldn't even notice me between your teeth. But those two children over there, they would be delicious treats, as plump as partridges. I beg you to take them, kind Mr. Bear, and let me go. However, the bear was not swayed by his words. He struck the ill-tempered creature with his paw, and the dwarf fell lifeless to the ground. Meanwhile, the girls ran away as fast as they could, heading back home. But suddenly, they were stopped by a familiar voice calling out, Snow White, Rose Red, wait, don't be afraid, I will accompany you. The bear quickly approached them, and as he reached their side, the bear skin slipped off, revealing a handsome man dressed entirely in gold. He said, I am a prince who was enchanted by the wicked dwarf over there. He stole my treasure and forced me to wander the woods as a bear until his death would set me free. So he has received the punishment he deserved. Sometime afterwards, Snow White married the prince, and Rose Red married his brother. They shared the enormous treasure that the dwarf had collected in his cave. The old mother spent many happy years with her children.